So welcome back to my channel. Now today I want to talk about the gazinia plant and I have one here. Now it's the evening, it's going into the evening and that's why you see some of them have actually closed up although some of them do need to get deadheaded. Now the beautiful thing about this plant is that there's so many different varieties and so many different colors and they all have designs. You know, once you do see the flowers, you're like, wow, God's creation here. But the beautiful thing about this plant is that it's drought tolerant. It, it is a sun loving plant and it's so easy to manage. It's one of the easiest plants. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how to propagate this plant through division. It, you can propagate through seeds, but we'll leave that to another day. Thank you so much. My name is Alice and I'm the Red Soul Gardener. Join me on this one. These are so beautiful, these gazanias. And the other name for them is the treasure flower or the African daisy. Now, the thing about gazanias is that when they do bloom and they do need full sun for this, is they give you this dazzling display of color. Now, look at these two particular colors that I have. Now, this is a big giant head and this is our small little delicate gazania and actually from this particular plant but this one look at that beautiful dazzling and the thing is is that they do overwhelm you because the thing is is that when you do look at the gazania flowers there's so many different types of designs you get stripes on the petals you get them in different hues they come in yellow they come in in pink they come in burgundy all these beautiful flowers is that they're so easy to propagate and I will show you how to do it. As you've seen is that they are the two different types of uh, gazinias. Now you do get the one with the bigger bloom and then you get some with the smaller bloom. Now what happens is, is that also you do get two types of variety, the one which grows in clumps and you get others that do actually trail. Now the one you grow in clumps, those are great for rock gardens because they will stay there and they do flower profusely. Now the other one, the trailing one, which are great, you can hang, have them as hanging baskets as they fall or you could have them along a wall, you know, or a bank and let them just, um, what do you call it, S slither down. Now, the thing about our gazinia is, uh, first of all, you do have many varieties. Now, what I have is the green leafed variety and the gray leafed variety. But what they have in common is at the back of each uh, leaf, you get this lovely silvery, hairy looking back. And again, with this one, look at this at the back, you get this lovely silvery white um, and it's got hairs on it. But the thing about it is it's, this is how the plant is able to reflect light and also to keep its moisture because this is why it actually survives as a drought tolerant plant, is that this is the mechanism it uses to conserve water and also to reflect that sun through that shiny background underside of the leaf. So the thing is, is about the gazinia plant is basically it is light sensitive. So what happens is that in the morning when you do get the full sun, suddenly all these flowers just open up and they, they're stunning. I mean, could you imagine a multitude of these? Then in the evening, as the sun goes down, the flowers close. And the thing is, is that why these particular flowers have not opened up is because we had a dull day. I mean, it was overcast in the morning and a, a few hours ago. So what happens is that because it didn't get enough light, it remained closed. Now, another thing, let's look at the soil of the gazinia. 
Now, the thing is, is that as we mentioned before, it's drought tolerant, sun, it loves full sun. And in countries like Australia, they've actually said it's invasive because it does produce seeds and scatter. So basically, the garzinia doesn't really, I mean, in terms of soil, for as long as it's well drained, because it doesn't like to have its root around water, for as long as it's well drained, it actually can grow in any sort of type of soil. So when I plant my gazinia, as in here, is we're going to transplant some of them, I do try to mix a lot of sandy soil with the garden potting soil and then with that I will add the compost so that it drains well. The next thing is water requirement. So with water requirement, I would actually just water it like any other plant, but it can go through four or five days without water and it's not going to die. So also when you do water, you could, you could actually give it that spacing or four days and then water it again, but basically it can manage. The other thing is that with this plant is that the more sun it does get, the more blooms it does get. And as we know, is that it will go into seed production. So what you need to do to get so many blooms as I did for this particular one, which I have in front, is just keep deadheading it. The more you deadhead, the more blooms do come up. So just continue deadheading and you'll have blooms right through the summer. So now what I've decided is just to show you because I've, I actually, as usual, pulled the plant apart. And so I have this one, uh, which is the greener variety and we have the silver variety and that's how it grows in clumps. I just wanted to show you. So once you do have one plant, as I've propagated these ones, is once you do have pl one plant and then you remove that and either put it in its own container, it will eventually look like that. And what happens is that when you do turn it around, you do see the main root here and all these little side shoots actually come from basically that mother root that is growing. Now, if you look at this one, exactly the same is you get the initial rooting, but as the plant matures and it grows, is that on the side, you do get all these little shoots coming out and that's what we're going to propagate. So now that we've seen the way these roots operate and when we're doing our propagation, all we need to do is actually pull these babies out and then stick them in soil and then let it settle and get stronger, the roots. And then from there, you can actually decide what you want to do with your garzinias. So I'll show you how to do it. So this is one, so we can do the green one here into this pot and also this grayish variety, I will do it in the other pot. So basic propagation is first of all, I look at the clump, turn it over and literally just pull it. So as I pull, what I'm doing is I'm starting with my babies. These are my baby garzinias. So I'm just going to remove them all here like that, simply. And then the next stage, what I'm going to do is actually just remove the buds. As we know, we don't want the concentration to be in flower production. So as I'm cleaning them, just making sure that I'm just removing all these dead leaves and also making sure that I don't have any more flowers. So what I've been doing is actually cleaning them and putting them aside. And I'll show you what we do next is um, just cleaning it up. So now what I want to show you is once we clean it, I can even separate it more. 
just snip it. So now as we snip them, separate them, is I'd like to show you exactly what I'm trying to do is that basically is that this is the plant but if you look at where the rooting has taken place in the plant as we separated it do you see a side shoot it comes from right beneath just from one of the nodes and this is where the babies just jut out and as they get healthy you get that lovely clump so basically this is going to actually take off. Now what I'm going to do is with some of these leaves I am going to remove them because I have seen especially in the roadside nurseries and people do do that is you just actually plant it like that but I just want it to be a bit neat and we do need a few of these leaves for photosynthesis but all I'm going to do is just remove the ones which are falling and I'm going to plant it and it's very simple so all I'm going to do is make a hole and cover it and out of all these little babies we will get them taking off rooting and in the end we will have our beautiful gazinias and some of them luckily they do have rooting so they will take off very fast. So now this this one what I'm going to do is just plonk it in here cover it and there we are we have the light green one some of the leaves are pretty long but um, I could snip some off so that we don't have so much foliage but basically whether I remove the foliage or not it's okay it's going to grow I trust it so that's one and I'll just quickly do my my silvery leafed gazania this one and again the same principle is i would remove all the flowers first there we go and then again the same principle is take it split it and there we have our babies and with these babies i will just stick them in like that and once they've grown again is like what we said we will move it into its own pot so now with my gazinias what i'm going to do is just lightly water them so that um, helps with the, the rooting and then i'm going to position them in a shaded area because we don't want the scorching sun on them and then once they do mature as i said before as i've been rambling is uh, put it out and let the rooting take place now the other thing is that so when we look at garzinias what sort of pests they're actually more or less uh, pest free but the only thing that you would get is mildew or amphids if you keep it really clumped together and a lot of moisture in the soil and as I mentioned earlier it doesn't like to have water around the roots but if you keep it really aerated and don't have too much moisture it's good to go the other thing is that for overwintering if you do have your gazinias in a pot bring them in they don't like to freeze and you could lose your plant the other thing is that you could actually if you do have gazinias in your garden do dig them up and what you can do is use this time to actually separate your garzinias and propagate them and wait for the spring. The other thing is that if you do live in a country that the, the temperatures are quite mild and you do get a drop in temperature, you could actually mulch it, you know, cu uh, cut it down a bit and then mulch it, either with straw or hay, we've done this before, or cocoa, uh, what you call it, with peat moss on top of it and keep it insulated. And then once the spring comes, you remove that, fertilize it and let those little buds come up. Up. 
So thank you so much, fellow gardeners. Thank you so much for following this channel and do get your gazinias, great summer plants. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, press that notification button so that you're always notified. And do follow us on Instagram, we're always posting. And I do post all my favorite plants and we do give tips. And also do follow us on Facebook, we're there. And do send me your comments. I'm always there to answer it. And thank you so much. And do invite your friends and your family and have a lovely day and happy Gazinia day. <laughs> Thank you.